It was extraordinary. I have to say, epic does not even begin to describe it. We wanted to take this trip to understand why we have all been experiencing such extreme weather, from droughts to fires, floods, and hurricanes, even more. To find out, we hopped on an eight-hour flight aboard an Air Force C-130 cargo plane to Thule Air Force Base. That's not far from the North Pole in Greenland. And there we met up with NASA scientists working around the clock to compile data that could be critical to our future on Earth. When you're this far north, this time of year, the sun barely sets, something most Americans will never experience. But changes to our planet are something we can all feel. Back home in Washington, whether or not climate change is real still seems to be up for debate. But right here, 750 miles north of the Arctic Circle on the sea ice of Greenland, there is no debate at all. Climate change is real, it's happening, and this is ground zero. So this is the ice layer down here. So if you were to lick it and... <laughs> it tastes like salt yeah, water? it's salty. <laughs> Whoa, it's really salty. <laughs> so now you know you're on the ocean. Nathan Kurtz is the lead scientist of NASA's Operation Ice Bridge. Its mission is to map Earth's polar ice to monitor its rapid changes and understand its connection to the global climate. Without a doubt, this is the coldest place, possibly the coldest moment I've ever experienced in my entire life. How is this ground zero for climate change? I mean, snow, ice, it, it doesn't seem very complex, but when you start getting into the, how all these things come together and form our sea ice pack, and then how that is changing, all that is pointing to thinning ice, shrinking ice cover. And that leads to climate change? Yes. This year, during the coldest part of the year, the Arctic experienced its warmest levels ever recorded and the second lowest sea ice levels. Collecting this data is central to NASA's mission. And that data you get from 1,500 feet. Yes. <laughs> NASA invited us exclusively aboard their P-3 Orion that surveys the Arctic. Minutes after takeoff, we were over the ice sheet and sea ice. And I was angling for the best seat. We're flying at 1,500 feet, and I mean, this is all you see. This is pretty nice. The man responsible for making sure the plane stays on course is John Sontag, mission scientist and navigator. What you guys see up here every year, though, is what climate change actually looks like. Yeah, this is the, the kind of the front lines of climate change, that's right. That sea level rise here is what we all feel down at home. Yeah, if you take away some of the sea ice, you make the whole planet darker and make it more able to absorb the sun's energy. The deputy project scientist, Joe McGregor, took me up to the cockpit as we got closer to the day's destination, Peterman Glacier. And that's when things got a little bumpy. And this glacier is one of the few glaciers left in Greenland that still has an ice shelf at the end of it. In other words, floating ice that is attached to the original glacier. Hang tight. And, Hold on, guys. And that glacier is changing significantly. It's, it's capped some very large icebergs these last few years. To collect data here, the scientists aboard the flight rely on radar, lasers, and a camera that shoots thousands of photos during the eight hours in the sky. But things don't always go as planned. One of the cameras just failed, so he's actually putting on a harness. Check this out. And he's got to go down there and repair one of his cameras. We'll see when he comes back. So what he's doing right now is he's actually looking at the camera to see if he needs to repair it or replace it with a backup camera. And he's wearing that harness just in case. If they hit turbulence, they can pull them right out. They were able to switch to the backup camera and didn't miss a beat. Its images and the other data collected aboard the flight go back to NASA's headquarters to be analyzed. After a successful mission, we landed back at the base. And even though it looks like a frozen tundra, the warming world may soon affect long-held traditions here. Marcus is a local hunter. Part of the reason that we came here was to go with NASA and to look at uh, the, the melting sea ice, climate change. It'll be very sad when the sea ice melts. And with that, Marcus set off on a three-day journey home, careful to avoid ice that's been slowly melting the last two years. This place may seem far away, but it turns out it's closer to home than any of us may have realized. 
I gotta say, you guys, I, you know, I'm no climate expert, I'm no weather <laughs> expert. I was thinking of you a lot, Al, when I was looking out that window because all the stuff, all these extreme weather events that you've gotten us through through the years, um, you can actually visualize how our planet is so interconnected, how it all starts up there. It almost, you know, gave me the chills. It gives me the chills right now yeah, thinking literally. about it. And, and that the chills because it was so cold. It was a negative <laughs> 17. Uh, did that hunter talk about how he's seen change up there and uh, how hard, much harder it is to find polar bears when they're yeah. he, The route that he normally takes home, so he went to that Air Force base for a dog sled race, which he wins, I should add, every year. <laughs> Um, and in order to get home, he's had to change the route home uh, over the last two years because of the ice that he normally would take has been melting. He says, you know, it's something he thinks is going to be in the distance. He's worried for the future generations. He's not seeing it, you know, in extreme levels right now. But it's happening. It's happening right now. What is life like on that base? Yeah. Cold. Very, very <laughs> cold. In the wintertime, it's never light there. So 24 hours a day, you're in darkness. Around this time of year, it starts to be light um, all day long. Wow. And uh, it, it's admirable. These people have raised their hand at the Air Force Base and at NASA to go up there and volunteer mm -hmm. to, to make sure that, you know, we can all have a, a future on planet Earth. That was awesome. That's cool. Tomorrow. So tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow, yeah. Jacob's take them. Fascinating. Thank, Thank you. you. Hello, Today fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.